Yes, I know. I have extraordinary good looks. But if only I could change the colour of my hair. Hi folks, thanks for tuning in again. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Will Lord and today's subject is lime bast. And um, I'm just peeling off the outer bark so I can get into the uh, Cambrian layer underneath, which is a combination of, um, it's a combination of layers that can be turned down into a really fine cordage. Um, this stuff here. So, um, just going to spend a few minutes just stripping this. If you know me properly, you'd expect me to be using flint. But on this occasion, I'm just using a draw knife. Being a little bit careful because what we don't want to do is actually hit the fibres that I'm after myself. You can actually instantly tell that, you know, the, the tannins come straight to the surface. However, one thing that I haven't pointed out yet, and you can't actually see, is that my hand, which looks like a hand, <laughs> as soon as you put that in water, it's what's going to happen is it's going to actually turn into a slippery, slimy matter, and um, that's quite interesting because what we're going to be doing with this is putting it into a tank of water and leaving it in there for anything up to about six weeks and um, the top of the water is actually going to throff up it's going to go yellow and it's going to stink um, I'm going to put it in clean water in the first place but it really is going to become quite an environment and if you can imagine what's going on in there with all that slipperiness um, and all of that froth and all of that fermentation is beginning to degrade what's connecting these fibres together and then all of the different layers are going to start to slip apart and then you can wash it all down which is quite important because quite often when you're um, making cordage it's a hand to mouth thing and all of that smelly slimy stuff is going in your mouth and then everybody is getting the shits <laughs> so you've got to be careful, you know. Um, but anyway, I digress. We're in the middle of we're in the middle of June now, as you know, and um, things are getting a bit drier. There's less liquid in these trees, although it's been rainy over the last few days. So they can make it a little bit trickier to actually get the um, the bark, uh, the, the fibres off of the uh, wood itself. But I think it'll be alright. So that's coming up nice, eh? So it was quite important for me to get this stuff in preparation now because in a few weeks time I have a course running where people are going to be in the woods for a week with me and um, 
part of that journey is to deal with cordage, making traps and so forth. So it's nice for them to get some alternatives. You know, they're going to be getting sinews, they're going to be getting nettle, they're going to be getting bramble, they're going to be getting roots from trees, they're going to be getting lime bast. Um, I like to give a combination to the subject, natural fibres. The thing is with flint napping, you can chop up anything you want, right? You can cut it, slice it, hack it. But if you can't bind nothing together, you're buggered, really. And um, some people refer to this particular material as kind of the queen of the cordage. Um, because you've got all that lovely length to play with and then you've got that beautiful maiden's hair of blondness. How about that for a beam of wood, you know? That's a nice piece of wood. Um, for firelight and all sorts of stuff you could do with that. Anyway, I thought you'd just enjoy that short little journey through um, another cordage. It's another day. Don't forget, I'm Will Lord. Don't forget, if you want to get on that course and actually use this stuff, get on my website, which is uh, will-lord.co.uk and um, book up, because I've still got a few places left on um, the four-day uh, prehistoric adventure. Cheers.